it says here that only four different cuboids can be made with 16 little one centimeter cubes. In other words, we could put them in a row of 16, so it would be one wide, one high, and 16 long. Or we could lay them out as two wide, still one high, but eight long. Or we could lay them out four wide, still only one high, and four long. Or we could lay them out two wide, two high, and four long. So there are one, two, three, four ways you could set out your 16 little cubes as a cuboid. Which of the cuboids A and D has the larger surface area? Explain how you know how. Well if we just show a working out of the surface area that will do the explanation. So cuboid A has got 16 square centimetres along this face and along the top face, and along the bottom face, and along the back face. So therefore it's got four 16 square centimetres, plus it's got a square centimetre at this end, and a square centimetre at that end. So that's four 16s is 64, plus two is 66 square centimetres surface area. Whereas D has got a surface area on this side of 2, 4, 6, 8, and the top, and the bottom, and the back, so it's got four lots of eight square centimetres for the surface area, plus this end, which is four, and that end, which is four, which is another eight. Four eights of 32 plus eight is 40 square centimetres. Obviously, I'd write a sentence as well, but I haven't got enough space. But my working out does my explanation. Which cuboid has the largest volume? Well, they're all made out of the same 16 cubes. Therefore we've all got the same volume as 16 cubic centimetres because they've been set out a different way. It doesn't change the volume. Another way you could look at it is that the volume is the length times the width times the height. And if you multiply these three numbers together in each case you'll get the same answer. So you could answer that by an argument that the volume must be the same or actually work it out and show that it's the same. How many of this cuboid D would you need to make a cuboid, sorry, to make a cube of 4x4x4? Four by four by four? So we want to put several of these together to end up with a cuboid that's 4x4x4. Four by four by four. So if we had another three of them, I think, because we put one on the side, and then one on the top there, and one on the top there, we'd end up with a cube 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Therefore, all together we need four of D to get our cube four by four by four. Now, there's a part D to this question. You can only make six different cuboids with 24 little cubes. So setting them out, as the examiner did with a 16 cubes, Either I could put them like that, and these would be the dimensions. So we've got to do the same sort of thing, but with 24 cubes. So it could be one high, one wide, and 24 long. And these three numbers have to multiply together to give me the 24. So the other ways we could do it would be to have 1 times 2, which is um, 2, times 12, which is 24, or we could have 1 times 3, and then 3 times 8, which is 24. Or we could have 1, 4 times 6, that would still give us 24. Or we could have one that's 2 wide and 2 high. That 2 times 2 is 4, and 4, 6 is 24. Or it could be 2 and 3 and 4. Excuse me, these are the only three numbers that multiply together to give me 24. If you put these numbers in a different order, it wouldn't make a new cuboid. So there's our six different cubes. Find the missing numbers using only negative numbers. So I've got to have a negative number there, 
and a negative number there and end up with positive 8. So if I put negative, oh, I don't know, any number there, let's put 2 there, shall we? If I then put negative 10 there, because 2 plus 10 is 8, and this is the same as minus 2 plus 10. So that's one of an infinite number of possible answers. Now I'm going to have a negative number there, and a negative number there, and end up with minus 4. So this will have to be, if I put that as a minus, that will end up as plus, so I need to put minus 6 there. A little bit of thinking about for the puzzle there. But there are an infinite number of possible answers I could have used. If x is 6, find the value of these expressions. A little bit of substitution. 2x means 2 times x, and if x is 6, it means that. 2 6 to 12 plus 7 is 19. 4x means 4 multiplied by x, and if x is 6, minus 8. So this is 4 6 to 24 minus 8, which is 16. 6 plus 5x is... That's 30, that's 36. Now you don't have to do this. You could do it just in your head if you wanted to. But I recommend this. Showing you work it out and it helps you ensure you've got a good chance of getting it right. Can't be. When 2y plus 12 equals 20, work out the value of y. Well, it's just a long way round of saying solve this equation. So let's do it by what we call inverses. Let's subtract 12 from both sides of this equation. If we subtract 12 from this side, and subtract 12 from that side. Now let's divide both sides of the equation by 2. If we divide both sides of the equation by 2, we solve the equation. Well, I'm always going to do that even if the examiner doesn't tell me to. This time we just say just solve the equation. And we've got 11y and we've got 5y. So we've got some y on both sides of the equation. So the first thing I want to do is to sort that out. So the first thing I'm going to do is to subtract 5y from this side of the equation and from this side of the equation subtracting 5y from both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Now when you divide by 6, you can actually show it by just writing as a fraction. That does say top number divided by bottom number. So it does say 15 divided by 6. That is correct one would expect you to do the next step and say 6 isn't 2, 15 goes 2 and 3 over. And in this case go one step further and cancel that fraction. Let's look at a graph. The graph shows a straight line. It most certainly does. The equation of the line is y equals 3x. So I've actually been told that the equation of this line is y equals 3x. So fair enough. Does the point 25, 75 lie on this straight line? Well, the axes no way go up to 25 or 75. But this is actually saying x equals 25. So if I take my equation and I substitute in the value of x, I find that y equals 3 multiplied by 25. 
So I've actually shown that when the x coordinate is 25, the y coordinate is 75, therefore I can say yes.